Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today I am working on the adult classic PJ pattern. I am super excited because this pyjama pattern can be made with woven or knit. It can be a nightgown, it can be a two-piece button-up and bottoms. Um, it's gender expansive so you can use it for the whole family. I am just really obsessed with it. Um, I used, I grabbed some, actually some blankets, some like fleece-like blankets from um, my local Walmart. They were like $3 a piece and that's what I'm using because I kind of love this pattern and they are super soft so I'm like, let's do it. And they were really, really inexpensive. So that's what I'm using. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with our pockets. Now, if you are not doing pockets, you need to make sure that you omit the pockets before you sew it, to, before you cut up the pattern. So what you would do is you overlap the piece, not the pocket facing, but the actual pocket piece lining, which is over there on the side, and you would place it right along this side so that you would cut straight so it doesn't have the pattern uh, opening where the pocket's gonna go. So then I'm gonna grab my pattern piece and I'm gonna make sure where it says, it notes, that this is the pocket side. We don't wanna attach the pockets to the crotch area. It is a longer piece. As you can see, like the, uh, the curve is lower and the pocket is shorter. So you can go by that, but if you're not quite sure, please make sure you check your pattern piece because you don't wanna put it on the wrong place. So now I'm grabbing my fabric and I'm putting it right side up. It is hard to tell in this fabric which one's the right side and which one's the wrong side. But that's okay. So this is my one pocket piece right here. And I'm gonna grab this lining and I'm gonna place it right sides together onto my uh, front pocket piece. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. And uh, you're gonna see my pocket, this one, my rainbows are upside down on this one because I cut it out of like a little remainder piece, but that's okay because this is the the lining. Uh, no, this is the pocket. So when I switch it over, let me tell you again what it's called. This is the the pocket facing, the pocket facing. So when I flip it over, you that's gonna be on the back, on the inside, so you won't even see that. So that's why I'm okay with it being upside down. Um, I usually try to make it all match, but you know, if, if it didn't, it didn't, and it's fine. I just, I have a little bit more left over of this fabric, but I have another thing that I wanted to do with it. So I was like trying to use up every single scrap. So now we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and sew that on. Now I am using, I'm doing the woven version of this pattern here. Um, this is a non-stretch fabric. So I can go ahead and use my sewing machine for all these steps. You don't need a stretch stitch on this, but I am, I do want to use my serger, so that's what I'm going to do. Again, you don't have to use your serger. You can use your sewing machine if you're doing the woven version. All right, so here is my pocket sewn on, my pocket facing. I'm gonna face it. I'm gonna turn it towards the back of my bottoms. See, this is my front, my right side. I'm turning it to the back and I'm going to use my iron and steam it down. And then we're gonna go ahead and top stitch it down. And for that I am going to use my sewing machine to top stitch it. You can use a cover stitch, you can use whatever you wanna to use to top stitch that pocket down right there. Alrighty, now I'm placing my pattern piece this is I'm sorry my pants piece this is the back of my pant here is my seam right here where I stitched that together the pocket facing and I'm gonna grab my pocket lining and I'm gonna place it right on top of my this is the wrong side the right sides together right on top of my pocket um, facing my pocket lining on top of my pocket facing. And let me show you, if you lift it up like this, here is them two together. I'm not gonna sew it to the pant. I'm just sewing them to that pocket to create like the pocket bag. Like this is where, this is gonna be my actual pocket. So you can see it right here. It's gonna be sewn all, we're gonna sew all the way around the bottom and the top. 
And then here at the top, I'm gonna grab the three layers and I'm going to baste them together here at the top and also at the side. So that way when I go to sew my pocket, um, they won't come apart. So I'm gonna sew around that side first, the, so the inside and the bottom, and then on the outer side and the top edge, I'm going to baste them together. And that means a straight, a long straight stitch on my sewing machine will work for that. I'm gonna do that on both. Again, here is my pocket. This is the wrong side of my pant. Here's the seam of my pocket that I just top stitched and it's facing up. And then I'm gonna grab that pocket um, lining and I'm gonna place it right on top, right sides together. The pattern pieces should match. And I'm matching the inseam, the inside of that together and the bottom part of that together. Again, you can sew this, since it's a knit, um, I mean a, a woven, you can sew with your sewing machine. Uh, but I'm going to use my serger because I just love using my serger on all the seams. But sewing machine will be just fine. You just have to make sure that you finish those raw edges at the end so that they don't fray. Now this, this fabric probably will not fray because it's kind of like a plush fabric. Uh, probably has some kind of uh, uh, polyester in it. But um, if you have fabric that's gonna fray, you want to finish off those raw edges um, so that it doesn't, after you sew it with your sewing machine, it won't fray on you and come apart. Um, so you can do that by either doing like a, a small zigzag stitch on the inside of the seam allowance um, or using your serger first and finishing off all those raw edges first and then sewing with your sewing machine. It really is up to you however you wanna finish those raw edges. Um, if you don't finish the raw edges, I mean, it won't fall apart right away, but after a couple of washes, you might start having some tearing because it will start falling apart like the uh, the woven pieces will start coming fraying and um, you don't want to spend all this time sewing a, a, a pattern and then end up with it falling apart after a few washes. So just be very careful with that and very aware of that. Um, if the fabric you're using is going to fray, then you want to do something about it. You can also use like a fray check. Um, um, you just It's kind of like a glue that you put along the edge that keeps those edges from fraying or anything like that would work as well. So for basting that top and sides, I'm using a stitch that is a length of five, which is my basting stitch. It's a stitch that you can later easily remove once you sew it together, uh, but it's gonna keep it there. So when you're going to sew it together, it doesn't come apart. So it really doesn't matter what kind of stitch it is. It's just actually holding it in place. That's all it's doing right now. All right, our pockets are basically finished and ready. As you can see right here, here's my uh, pocket. So I'm gonna go in right there. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab where that crotch seam is and we're gonna grab both fronts and put them right sides together and sew that crotch seam. And you're gonna do the same for the pants, for the back of the pants. Now remember, like I just mentioned, if you're using a woven and it's gonna fray, you want to finish off these edges in a way that they're not going to come apart. Oh good, these are already, cause they cut, they're cut mirrored to each other and they are already right sides together. So that's great. We're just sewing that crotch seam together right there. Alrighty. Now we're going to open up our bottoms. That crotch is sewn. And I'm going to sew those side seams. So here's my back. I'm gonna put it face up on my mat. I'm making the long pant version, so it's gonna take up my whole ironing board. And then I've got my front right here, and I'm gonna place it right on top. And I'm gonna match those side seams. And see how the cool thing is right now that since we did that basting stitch, um, they should stay together when you go to sew. Um, the reason why you do that is so that that pocket won't try to hide and then after you're done sewing you go over there and you open it up and you see that you missed your pocket and you didn't sew it to the side. Um, you don't want to do that. So it's easier to just go ahead and do that basting stitch and keep it in line <laughs> so that it will um, 
sew together when you need it to. And so we're going all the way down and we're going to do that for the both outer seams of our front and backs together, right sides together. All right, so once you've sewn those outer seams, you can come back and sew that inseam. I am going to go ahead and pin it now. Um, I'm, I use clips and I feel like clips are really good at keeping that shape. And if I'm going to sew the outer seam, I feel like clips will keep it together better than pins. So that's why I feel confident in going ahead and pinning and clipping, I'm sorry, my inside seam. So right sides together, I'm just pinning the, those insides. Um, but if you don't feel confident, if you feel like, oh, I better do one side first and then go do the, uh, the sides first and then come back and do the inseams, that's completely fine as well. Um, so I just like to go ahead and do them both at the same time. So that's what I'm pinning or clipping. I keep saying pinning, I'm not pinning, I'm clipping. In clipping my inseam, I matched my, um, this is my crotch seam right here, my front and my back together. And then I went down one leg and now I'm going down the other leg. All right, so now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna mark my bands, which one's the front and which one's the back, because they are very similar in length. Um, the front is a little bit smaller, but I don't wanna get it confused. So what I'm going to do is I like to put a red in the back, a red clip, and then in the front I usually put a green clip. Um, I don't know why, um, I just, that's how I think of it in my mind, like the back of the sleeve I usually put a red or whatever. Um, so that's how I'm marking mine, and then I'm gonna grab them and open them up and fold them wrong sides together to give it a memory crease with my iron. I'm just gonna steam that memory crease on there. It's not, memory creases are not mandatory, but they are recommended because then when you go to sew them on the round and you go to um, like attach them, they are so much easier to do, to fold once you've already given in a memory crease. If you don't give a memory crease, sometimes if the fabric is stubborn, you'll fold, it'll unfold and you'll have a hard time trying to do it. Now with some fabrics, it really isn't a big of a, as big of a deal that with others. Some fabrics will just fold and be kind and gentle and easy going, but some are like, I'm not gonna do it. So having that um, memory fold really, really helps, especially with a, a sub, 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 small things such as neck bands. So now we're gonna go ahead and place them right sides together at the short raw edge and sew. Um, again, you can do this with a serger or a sewing machine. I'm just gonna head on over with my sewing machine because then it, the seam will be less bulky. Um, if I do it with a straight stitch on my sewing machine and then open up the seam allowance once I'm done and steam it. Um, so that makes that seam a little bit less bulky, but it really doesn't matter either way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll attach it to our waistband and add the elastic and hem it and we'll be done with our bottoms and then we'll move on to our top. Like I said, I'm gonna open up that seam allowance right there that I created. Just kind of flatten it out. Now, if because if you're using woven and it's going to fray, you need to make sure you finish those edges so it's not gonna come apart on you like we talked about earlier. Now we're gonna go ahead and fold it again on that memory crease that we made earlier. And we're gonna find our halves by matching up our side seams and going to the front and the back. And my clips were almost on the half, but not quite. So I'm just gonna move them over to my half because that's where I'm going to attach them to my bottoms. Turn my bottoms right side out. These are gonna be so cozy. And I have my front here and my back back here. And then I'm going to place my waistband right on top, right sides together. As you can see, here's my front and my side to my side seam and back to back and the other side to the side. We're gonna go sew it on, but we're going to leave a gap. So we're gonna go all the way around, except for we're gonna leave like a two inch gap where we're going to fit our waistband elastic through and then we'll come back and close it once we fit our elastic and sew it on and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go sew that waist. Again, um, you can use your sewing machine or your serger. 
um, but you want to finish those raw edges at the end when you're done when you close that you might want to zigzag stitch them closed or whatever you want to do um, let's do that I've got my elastic ready to go and I'm gonna use a safety pin I'm gonna go right there where I left that gap and we're gonna fit that elastic right through that gap and feed it all the way around our waistband All right, so you want to make sure that your elastic is not twisted once you're done and then we're going to grab it and overlap it and zigzag stitch it together so we're gonna do that over on my sewing machine and while I'm at it I'm also going to um, I don't want to fit it in there yet um, and then we're gonna close that gap once we zigzag stitch it we'll feed it through and we'll close that little gap together that we left and then we're also going to hem so we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and prep that already that way because I'm gonna hem on my sewing machine that will be ready you know what actually yeah you can go ahead and do that but I'm gonna wait because I went with the longer um, version and I think it might be a little too long I'm not really sure I um, so I didn't really obey like the you know like length rules so I just went for it so I'm going to wait and do that at the end once I've already tried it on and seen how long I want it or whatever. So, but that's easy. You just fold over whatever it is that you want to take off or, you know, the half an inch uh, hem seam allowance um, if you went by the instructions, which I should have, but I just went for it. Um, and I usually, this is the thing, I like longer bottoms. So sometimes I'd rather them be a lot longer than what the pattern calls for. Um, so I will just go with the longer version and then take off whatever I don't want at the end. So that's what I, that's my personal preference and that's why I did that. Um, but um, you can go ahead and hem now, but if you want to, you can just leave it towards the end and that will be just fine. Um, so let's finish this up. I go back and forth on my zigzag, 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 zigzag stitch a couple times and then I feed it through. Pull it all the way through and then I come back right here and we're going to go over to whatever you did even if, if you did it on your sewing machine then do it on your sewing machine if you do it on your serger we're just going to close that gap I am super excited because these are going to turn out super cute already loving it um, you can go ahead and pull out that basting stitch you all you got to do is just basically pull um, that thread off I it's easier when you pull the basting stitch like no, I'm sorry not the basting stitch the back the bobbin um, that comes off a little bit easier but anyway so you do that and I'm gonna put those aside and hem later once I try them on I'm super excited and let's work on our top again I'm making the woven version um, and but we also have the knit version which would be super easy to sew as well um, we're gonna grab our back and we're gonna put it face up on our mat I'm trying to figure out which one's the front and which one's the back and which one's the front. No, um, no, I mean which one's the right side and which one's the wrong side. And uh, look at this. <clears throat> Can you see what I did? I cut on the fold instead of cutting it down the middle. That's an easy fix because what I did was I didn't cut this line right here. So I'm going to fold it back up and go cut it. And I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. That was that. Okay, now I'm going to grab my back and put it face up on my mat and then my front and put it face down, right sides together. Make sure that this is, I marked right here already where my color front is um, on the pattern piece. I put a little marking on there. So I know that that's my color. Um, so make sure that you match your color with your color and your um, arm side with your arm side. You see this is a, the color front piece is a lot shorter than your arm size so it won't fit so make sure that they fit together nicely and it's right sides together sorry and we're just sewing the shoulder why was I going to the arm Ooh, I almost made a big mistake we're sewing the shoulders together you saw me over there trying to match up the arm side and you're like what are you doing I'm like I don't know I almost think like that's the right side and this is Y'all, I cannot tell which one's the right side and which one's the wrong side. That's okay. If I can't tell, you can't tell. And it's probably, um, actually probably brushed on both sides because it's a blanket. So it probably supposed to have both sides be soft. So that's probably why I can't tell. 
and we're gonna go ahead and sew those shoulders. Once I sew those shoulders, if you're doing a sewing machine, you might want to spread out and um, steam that seam, that seam allowance. Again, um, using woven, please go ahead and uh, finish up those raw edges. I'm gonna use my serger for that. And then I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and put a basting stitch, one of those long straight stitches around the neckline. With woven fabrics, a lot of times, um, especially with flannel and stuff like that, they get distorted, like they kind of twist and turn. Uh, putting that basting stitch in there keeps it, helps it keep its shape so that when we go to sew um, it all together, it keeps it nice and, and shapely. I hope that makes sense. So that's what that basting stitch is for. So let's go do that. I'm gonna grab my bodice. I put in that basting stitch because I surged the edges, I didn't open my seam allowance, but if you didn't, if you did um, just sew it, then you wanna open that seam allowance. And here is my arm side. This is where my sleeve's gonna go. I'm gonna grab one of my sleeves. I'm gonna fold it in half and mark the top of my sleeve. Just gonna do like a little clip to show where that is. And then find I marked my back. See, I did like two little notches right there when I cut it. So I know that that's my back piece. And then we're gonna put it right sides together at that where I marked the center piece. And then I'm gonna match up the raw edges, going slowly and matching those up along the raw edge. So it's right sides together, my arm side and my sleeve cap all the way down the side. And it should fit right in to that um, side and then we go down the other way as well and we're going to do that for both and we're going to go over and sew them all right sleeves are on and now we're going to sew our side seams side seams so we're gonna match up those um, armpit seams right here. And we're gonna go down the sleeve and down the body, the bodice. Right sides together at that raw edge. I am super excited about these because I feel like they're going to be super cozy and I want to make them for my whole family. Uh, my son has just basically, Probably not really, but I, I, he is like at the last size of the kid sizing. So he is going into adult sizing here soon, which is a bittersweet thing. Um, I'm excited to make him the adult patterns, but I'm also super sad because he's growing up way, way, way too fast. He's like almost as tall as me and I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> the time goes by way too quick. Um, but I think I can probably, I could probably get away with making him a set of these in the smallest size, uh, because they will be a little bit big on him, but because they're comfy PJs, I think they would be good, but that's just kind of sad. So, but anyway, I'm excited because these, uh, if you've been sewing with me, it is super easy to make this. Um, and they are going to be super cute. I'm super excited and super comfy too. And I just love that there's so many options. That is one of the greatest things about Ellie and Mac. And if you have not tried our patterns, go check out our website at elliamac.com and find all our different patterns. We have great instructions. So like written instructions that you can just look up or print out and, and watch and and use but we also have videos with most of our um, patterns where I show you how, just how easy it is to actually sew it up and if you get stuck in a step you can come over here check it out sew it up with me and then not only that but the pattern itself usually has so many options and the size ranges are amazing so inclusive so great so if you have not checked it out go check it out if you're scared to try out PDF patterns we have videos on how um, exactly it is that you download and you print at home or you, you, you can use a projector. There's also a video on our channel where Sonia shows how she uses her projector to um, cut out her patterns. I mean, it is so, so awesome. And I'm gonna tell you from firsthand experience, PDF patterns are so much easier to me than actual paper patterns. I get so confused with paper patterns, but PDF patterns have just such great instructions, especially Ellie and Mag patterns. So if you have not tried them out yet, go ahead and, and give it a try. We do have a some free patterns on our site. So if you wanna go check out the free patterns first, 
Um, the information, the link to that is below. You can go check that out first and say, is this really a, something I'm gonna enjoy or not? Um, and and do that. And then comment below and let me know if you have any questions. Also comment below and let me know if this is your first time trying Ellie and Mac or if you just heard about Ellie and Mac and we're so excited to have you. So let's go ahead and sew the sides and finish up this top so we can um, enjoy your cozy PJs. Alrighty, now that that's sewn, we can go ahead and hem our sleeves and the bottom of our uh, top by folding a half an inch seam allowance in. And honestly, I don't even um, measure. I just go with my half an inch. I, I guess after hemming and sewing for a little while, you kind of just get used to what the half an inch is. And honestly, when I go measure it, it's pretty spot on. So sometimes I measure it like if I'm sewing it for somebody else. Um, but if I'm sewing it for myself, I kind of just go for it. So we're doing half an inch. We can go over to the sewing machine and sew that hem all the way around. While I'm doing that on my sewing machine, I'm also going to grab my collar. And I'm gonna put it face up on my mat, and I'm gonna. I have two two collar pieces, so I'm gonna put one face up and one face down right on top of it. And I'm going to sew the top, so it kind of goes out this way. The collar does, as you can see, kind of goes out. So you're gonna sew up, over, down. You're gonna sew it together, right sides together. And you can do this in the sewing machine or the serger. I'm going to do it on my sewing machine because I want it to be, I want these points of the color to stick out nicely. Um, and the, the sewing machine, you can trim the bulk uh, of the seam allowance so that it's not as bulky at the point, so it has a nicer, sharper point. Uh, with the serger, it won't be as sharp. It'd still be fine. I mean, sometimes I do it with my serger as well, so it's up to you, really. Um, but I think I'm just gonna go with, do it with my sewing machine at the same time that I'm hemming my top. Alrighty, that's hemmed. I'm gonna put it aside for just a minute. I'm gonna grab my collar piece and I'm gonna trim right here the excess in the corners. And you can trim a little bit of the seam allowance if you want to. And then I'm gonna turn it, poking those corners out. If you have a tool to do that, if not, you can use anything you have. I You can use um, whatever you have. I don't really have a tool for it, but just using this screwdriver, but just using it lightly. And then I'm gonna steam it, and then you can go over to your sewing machine and top stitch it down, like the outer edges, to give it a sharp look. Top stitch up, over, down. All right, while I'm at it, I'm also going to go ahead and grab the front neck facing. Um, I cut my interfacing um, I'm going to grab, hold on, let me put this together first and then we'll attach the inner facing. We've got our, uh, this is our back neck facing. I'm gonna put it right side up here and I'm gonna grab the front neck facing and I'm gonna match like the shoulders areas right here. Here's one shoulder area and here's another one. And what they do is they, overlap each other like so. This is how they overlap each other. One will have the buttons, one will have the button holes. And we're gonna sew at the shoulders. I'm just gonna do this, it, this at the same time that I'm top stitching the color, so that's why I'm showing you right now. Now, for me, because, well, let's go ahead and also, once we sew those together, we can open that up and we can go on our serger or on our sewing machine and finish the bottom and the outside edge of the whole thing um, so it doesn't come apart. Now for me, because this fabric is like a blanket fabric that doesn't really fray, I don't really have to do that, but if you have fabric that frays, um, you will definitely want to do that so it's not gonna fray out on the inside because that's gonna be on the inside, like that's gonna be like this edge right here on the inside of your, of your shirt. So it will show through and um, you don't want it to fray. So that's why it's important to do that. Um, this is this one is not a fabric that frays, so it should be fine. 
But if your fabric is going to fray, you really definitely want to do that. So let's do that. Sometimes you may have a little trouble with your sewing machine if it doesn't want to grab your fabric because it's too thick. I like to use a pin and I put it onto the edge of my fabric and feed it in. Now I make sure that my needle is not going to get, it's behind my needle. And then I use that to pull my fabric back as I'm going. And it, it just gives it enough that it catches on. Once it's caught on, then it should be just fine. So we can do the same thing here. Just fit it in and push it. There we go. Another piece of advice I'll give you, I just made that mistake because I wasn't paying attention. Do not put your fabric so close to the foot that your needle pushes it down. Make sure that you follow your seam allowance. That's what it's helpful for so that it, it stays at the edge of your foot. Then you won't have so much uh, of your fabric trying to be eaten by your foot. All right, so our color is done and we'll be attaching that in a minute. But while you have this piece right here, you want to make sure that you add your... Um, facing to it and right it to the right side. So you want to make sure that it's um, the wrong side of the fabric. And then when you're, you, you want the e extra reinforcement on the side that has the buttons um, because you don't want the buttons to rip your fabric through. That makes sense um, so usually when you go to button a fabric figure out when you go to button a fabric when you go to button a shirt you can figure out which side your buttons gonna be on I usually use it up on my the worst wearers left hand side so that's where I'm gonna put this but you can put it on both sides as well actually and that would help too with your um, button holes you probably are supposed to put it on both sides actually now that I started to think about it yeah, you probably should. Anyway, but I'm going to use this interfacing. I'm going to place it right in the middle of it, and I'm going to iron it on. It helps so much when it comes to adding the buttons and, and the buttonholes. Actually, when you're sewing the buttonholes on your sewing machine, it gives a little bit of extra sturdiness or whatever to the fabric. So I'm just adding that on. I'm gonna have to go cut another piece for the other side because I didn't, so I'll add that on in a minute. But now we're gonna work on our color. I'm gonna fold my color in half and find my half of my color. And again, I'm just gonna kind of snip it a little bit so I can see where it's at and I don't forget. Now I told you earlier that I had already marked my shirt where my color is gonna go. So I'm just gonna find, grab those shoulder seams and find the back of the shirt, the back of the bodice. And that's where my color is going to start. So I'm going to place it right sides together, right on top of that same spot. All right, so here's my half point, And I want to go all the way to where I marked my uh, clip, where it ends. And I'm going to match up those raw edges. They should match nicely. And I'm going to sew them together. I'm going to do the same to the other side. Here's that mark. I already marked it earlier from my pattern piece. All these marks are in your pattern piece um, that I'm talking about and then I'm going to go sew that color on. I am actually just basting the color on. I'm not sewing it on yet. I'm just basting it on because I'm going to sew it on when I sew all the different layers on. So this is just a basting stitch. A long straight basting stitch. Friends, we are almost done. Alright, so we've got that middle piece right here marked already so I'm going to grab my facing and I'm gonna grab the two where the neckline is uh, I mean sh shoulder where the sh sh where the shoulder seams are for the back neckline and I'm gonna mark that and see how it kind of curves like that this is the top area and I'm going to place that I'm gonna sandwich that color right between that facing and the color Okay, right sides together, and I'm going to go all the way down the side. So I'm going to open it up like so. Here's my 
front piece, here is my collar, and I'm going around with that. It should hit right at, whoop, hold on, this came loose. It should hit right here at the edge, that corner edge, and go all the way down. Now when you get to the bottom, you'll see that you'll have extra of the facing, more than because you hemmed already. And so we're just going to fold it up and then we'll top stitch it down as well, like the hem down, like we did hem already, once we come back. So we'll go all the way down. We fold that piece up at the bottom and we're going to sew it on and go all the way around the front. So we're going to do it all the way to the front. And right here at this piece right here that's folded down, then we're going to come back and top stitch right there where we did our hem already. We'll fold it in and top stitch. So we're not going to do that yet. We're just going to sew it all the way around because when we fold it to the right side, so it goes like this, it's sewn on, then it's going to get folded to the right side and, and under stitched because that's the facing that gives it like the little extra reinforcement right here at the front. And so we're gonna go all the way over to the other side as well and keep going with that. This is the back of the neck. We're going all the way around that neck, right sides together with the collar sandwich between the top. Here's the collar, here's the top bodice, the collar, and here's my facing. and then all the way down the front. Here at the end, we're gonna fold this piece up to match to the, match that raw edge right there. I mean, not raw edge, to match the hem edge. And so that, all the way around. All righty, we are basically done. Now we're just turning everything right side out, pulling all the basting stitches off. And here where we had that piece, once we understitch, we'll fold that over right on top and we will just go right over where we did our ham stitches. And actually we have this serger tail here. I'll just fold it in and tuck it in so that when I do that sew, it gets sewn in there. And then we'll just sew it, sew right over where we did that hem right there and it'll, it'll stick it down right there too. So I'm turning all the way right side out. Now um, you can go ahead and understitch so that that piece doesn't come up. Um, you don't want this to be folding, lifting up every time you're trying to wear it. So we're gonna give it a good steam, though my iron turned off so it's probably not very hot and I'm stepping, I'm sitting right on top of it. Um, and under stitching just means you're gonna open this up and you're going to grab the seam and you're gonna steam that seam towards the, um, the facing and then you're going to top stitch it along the facing so that it keeps it in here, top stitched in. You could also, if you want to, just go ahead and top stitch all the way around um, from the outside and just have a top stitch look all the way around. I like to do that too. I might just do that. Honestly, I know I say this in like every video and you're like, I don't understand why, but I do not like understitching. I don't know why, I just have never loved understitching. Um, it gives me a hard time. So usually I will rather just go ahead and top stitch. So I think that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch it down. Um, and it looks fine just top stitched and I'll top stitch it all the way around and then we'll have to work on our favorite part, buttons. Um, you can actually either do buttons or you can do snaps. It really is up to you whatever you wanna do, buttons or snaps. Um, snaps are easy, buttons are actually really easy too. I just, I'm fearful of buttons always. That's just the thing, I think, I don't know why. But um, if you don't wanna do buttons, you don't have to. And actually I forgot to put the facing on this. So I'm gonna go back and put that facing on that before I try to do buttonholes and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, then also here at the shoulders, you see the facing is kind of trying to stay up right here where the shoulders meet. 
we're gonna go back and I can sew a stitch right here at the crease at that stitch shoulder seam right there um, and top stitch this down so that way that facing won't be coming up so we'll top stitch it down right here as well when I'm top stitching so let me go do that top stitching and add the uh, uh, interfacing I couldn't think of the word to the front and then um, we'll go do I'll show you how to do a buttonhole one buttonhole there's also a video, now I created a video on how to use uh, buttonhole foot and all this thing. So you want to go check that out if you have questions about that. Honestly, I'm almost tempted to just do snaps on this one because of the fabric. It's super cute and snaps are super easy. So I might just do that. Please don't be upset with me if I don't do buttons and I just do snaps. Let's just go top stitch first. Then we'll talk about it. I'm going to start at one end and I'm going to start by top stitching that hem right there to catch that piece. I'm going to go back and forth right here so you can catch the uh, that thread that I left behind and then we're going to top stitch all the way around. Now I'm going to do those shoulders like I told you. Y'all, this is super adorable. But because we're friends, I'm going to show you what happened. So when I went to top stitch and I <laughs> forgot to add the uh, facing, um, not the facing, the interfacing to this side and I didn't add it. I was like, oh, I can add it later. Well, when I went to top stitch, I guess I pulled on it and I stretched it out. So one side is now longer then the other side because of the fact that the one side had the sturdy interfacing on it and the other one didn't and I'm going to tell you it was not this way when I sewed it up it was after I did all the um the top stitching on it and this fabric stretched out because it's a fleece it has stretched this way and not this way really weird anyway so this I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pick that top stitching later what I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna wash it and it should shrink back up because it's this type of fabric if it doesn't then I'm gonna be very upset and then I'm gonna have to fix it some over the way um, you ask me how what other way will you fix it if it doesn't shrink up then I'll just um, fix it right on top of each other like so make it sure making sure that it's even here at the top and then I'll trim off that side the other edge and make it even uh, make it make it make it be even so I'm not gonna put the facing or the snaps on right now because I want to wash it and shrink it up before so that they'll even out but don't be like me put that interfacing on there especially if you're using like a fleece type of fabric that's going to stretch out a little bit if you don't want to put the interfacing you can put in that basting stitch like we did at the neck so that it won't stretch out. So I'm gonna go put it on anyway, and I'm gonna put some pins so I can show you just exactly how cute this looks and my bottoms. Um, and then you tell me below what you think about it. And you actually tell me now that we didn't do this, um, should I do buttons or should I do snaps? I'm thinking snaps because it kind of goes with the whole theme of the, of the PJs. But I also think I have some cute buttons like stars or something that might go really cute. You let me know below what you think I should do. Uh, and also, if you have questions about how to do buttons, you can check out the video, nice video on buttons, or you can also check out my video on the A-line button skirt, button front skirt, because I did a ton of buttons on that one, and you um, and I show how to do them, so you want to check that out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Oh, let me go try it on so you can. Excuse me, how adorable is this? So here's my waistband, here's my bow over here trying to figure out what's going on as usual. Look at how cute, Paul oh, Regard, get down. Every time I try to show you all my outfits, he comes over here and he wants to see them too and he wants to say hello. Okay, stand right here, right here. Okay, so how adorable did this turn out? I am obsessed, it fits so great, it's super comfy. 
I love it. And actually, it's not too far off when I when I want to fix it together. So hopefully once I wash it and it kind of shrinks up a little bit, it will be perfect. Let me know below. That's my iron turning off and I was like, what is that? Let me know below what you think I should do. Should I do snaps? No. Should I do buttons? What should I do? What do you think I should do? I don't know. And you know what should I do? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Sit. Thank you. Stay right there. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, and I hope you are inspired to sew your own things. It really is easier than you think. I think sometimes we think that we can't do it, but I know you can. And if you have any questions, come find us here. Come find us on our Facebook page where we have awesome sewists who are willing to help um, and, and ready to just jump in and give you any advice that you need. Go make yourself some PJs. Comment below and let me know what you think about my buttons. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.